everyone. Welcome to another episode of Becoming a Ranger. My name is Clive and I'm one of the guides from a lodge here called the Homestead, um, which is up in the northern part of Pinda Private Game Reserve, which is where we are at the moment. And I'm going to teach you all about a very, very important skill that we need here to be guides and that you might need one day to become a guide. And that is driving these 4x4 vehicles. Before we head out on a game drive, there's a few things we need to make sure of with the vehicle before we go. Firstly, we have to make sure it's clean. And secondly, we have to make sure that the oil and the water levels are good. This is where we check the water. You can see the level is about there. Um, and the radiator is full of water, so that's good. And then the oil check is over here. You pull this little yellow key. Wipe off the old oil. Oh. Get it back in. And then we check the oil level. And there's plenty. So the first thing I'm going to teach you is how to drive in the sand and how do you get out of the sand if you get stuck. So as you can see here, there's two different gear sticks. This one is your normal gear stick with five gears. This small one over here is quite a special one that changes from either two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive, which is what we're going to do now because we're stuck in the sand here. What this four-wheel drive does is now give us power to all four wheels and it should help to pull us out of this, uh, out of this hole we've dug here. Let's see how that goes. Look at that. Come and have a look at the size of the holes that the tires dug in the sand for us. But using that four wheel drive, it quite easily pulled the vehicle out of even that little hole. And this can work in mud as well, not only sand. So the next very important thing uh, as part of the driving is how to be able to turn around and talk to your guests that are behind you. Because think about it, can you hear me better if I talk like this? It's much easier to hear me when I'm facing this way. I'm sure you noticed that. So being able to turn around and talk to your guests, and every now and then just having a look forward to see where you are on the road, and make sure you're not going off the road. But remember, this can only be done in a game reserve and when you've had a bit of training for doing it. So don't try this at home. So sometimes the driving is really easy as well and the road does all the work for you. In this case, I'm not even using my hand. So the road, the road is dented in on both sides and the wheels just stick to those roads and they don't move out. So I don't even need to steer. And again with this one, don't try this at home. Another thing that's very important when we're driving these 4x4 vehicles is off-road driving. Now, why do we go off-road? So sometimes there's animals that are far away from the road that we maybe can't see so well, especially out here in this long grass. Um, so sometimes we'll go off the road to try and see them a little bit closer or a little bit better. Um, and when you do that, what are some of the things that you need to think about? So firstly, you need to worry about your guest's comfort. Um, so you never, you can't see the road. Well, there's no road. You can't see the lay of the land, so it could be quite bumpy. So you have to tell them to just hold on to these bars ahead of them so that they're a bit more stable in the vehicle. And then remember with the gears, we were talking about the four-wheel drive earlier. That low-range four-wheel drive is so important in here because it makes you be able to drive a lot slower and more carefully, which is more comfortable for your guests. Lastly, tell your guests not to stand up because that could, I don't want them, you wouldn't want them to hurt themselves. Let's go off-road now, and I'll show you why it's important to go into low-range four-wheel drive. So 
So this is the first instance where I'm in two wheel drive. And then in this instance, I've now changed to low range four wheel drive. And then as soon as we change down to low range four wheel drive, how much more slowly and more controlled and more comfortable it was for the guest. Sometimes there are overhanging branches like this here. And like this tree in particular, it has thorns on it, which can also hurt your guests. So you've got to warn your guests when there's branches and to keep low down when you go underneath them. Sometimes while we're driving these big vehicles out here, we get flat tires. So what do we do if we get a flat tire? Well, firstly, we always have a spare wheel in the back of the vehicle. Um, and now I'm gonna show you how to change a tire on this vehicle. The first thing you have to make sure is that your handbrake is up so that your vehicle doesn't move. The second thing you've got to make sure of, again, so your vehicle doesn't move, is that you pack rocks or sticks underneath the tires here so that the wheel can't turn. Third thing we've got to do is loosen all the wheel nuts. Next thing is to use what we call a high lift jack to lift the vehicle up so we can get the wheel off. Okay, then we take the flat wheel off. And we put the new tire on. New wheel, should I say. Then all the wheel nuts go back on. One. Lastly, we jack the wheel back down, jack the car back down. The last thing I want to teach you about is going up or down a steep hill like this. Now remember when we got stuck in the sand a bit earlier, how the four-wheel drive helped us to get out of the sand, it's going to be the same here. This four-wheel drive, when we're going down, is going to help us to go down slowly and more safely. And then when we're coming up this hill, it's going to help us to not make the wheels spin like we were in the sand. So let's try. So if we were going up the steep hill in two-wheel drive, our wheels would actually spin. But as you can see in four-wheel drive, it's pulling us up nice and slowly and easily. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Becoming a Ranger. And I hope you guys have learned a lot about driving the 4x4 vehicles. And please don't forget to join us for the next episode on Becoming a Ranger as well.